Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to the channel. We're going to be looking at a couple of videos, mostly focusing on transgender athletes and just weird stuff in general. So let's get into it. Uh, my name is Riley Gaines. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Kentucky where I was on the women's swim team. I proudly finished my career as a 12-time NCAA All-American, a five-time SEC champion. Um, I am one of the fastest 200 butterflyers. Despite this intro alone, this woman has worked really hard to get where she's at, man. And congrats to her. I mean, she really deserves to be number one. Uh, of all time. Um, but on March 17th of last year, my teammates and I were, and other female swimmers from universities around the country were forced to compete against a biological male named Leah Thomas. The way she's explaining it is like if the girls themselves didn't have any choice to whether or not they wanted to compete with a transgender athlete or not. There was no choice. There was nothing. They're just like, go, go at it. You know, it, to us, it's fair, but clearly it's not. Um, Thomas was allowed to compete in the women's division after competing as a member of the University of Pennsylvania's men's swim team for three years. We watched on the side of the pool as Thomas won a national title in the 500 yard freestyle, beating out the most impressive and accomplished female athletes in the country, including Olympians and American record holders. Whereas just the year before, Thomas at best was ranking in the 400s in the men's category. So now you got a man, essentially. Essentially a man who's playing makeup and saying, hey, listen, I'm going to face off against other women uh, only because of the fact that I suck competing with other men and I want to get a gold medal. I want to be recognized for something. And so I want to face off against women and just take over their sport. That's pretty much what this person has just done. The next day, Thomas and I raced in the 200 freestyle, which ended up in a tie. Um, we went the exact same time down to the hundredth of a second. Having only one trophy, the NCAA told me that I would go home empty-handed and this trophy would go to Thomas. And when I questioned this, the NCAA told me that Thomas had to hold it for photo purposes. So I don't know what is dictating society nowadays to, to praise a transgender athlete above a biological athlete. So, for example, in this case, a biological female is not going to be, you know, respected or honored for their hard work and commitment over the years, facing hardships. But someone that all of a sudden says, hey, listen, I want to play makeup and I want to be a female today and I should be praised above all. I mean, and all of a sudden they're getting the praise and recognition and that hard work that this girl and many other girls just like her who have tried so hard to get number one in the nation have now just got the back burner now. It's, it's ridiculous. Tragedy athletes want to compete, go in your own division. I was shocked. I felt betrayed and belittled, reduced to a photo op. But my feelings didn't matter. What mattered to the NCAA were the feelings of a biological male. In 1972, Congress enacted Title IX to end unjust sex discrimination in all aspects of education, including college athletics. But by allowing Thomas to displace female athletes in the pool and on the podium, the NCAA intentionally and explicitly discriminated on the basis of sex. Although the NCAA claimed it acted in the name of inclusion, its policies in, flat, in fact excluded female athletes. As society, we now have focused so much on the emotions and feelings of people, but have lost the, the ability to think morally and ethically on issues that really matter. That morally and ethically, this, this decision that was made by the NCC, NCAA or whatever sports organization, because there's others out there, is wrong. It's ethically and morally wrong. If you did, if they did this in like the 1950s, honestly, it wouldn't fly at all. That is not all. In addition to being forced to give up our awards, our titles, and our opportunities, the NCAA forced female swimmers to share a locker room with Thomas, a 6'4", 22-year-old male who was fully intact with male genitalia. All right, pause, pause, pause. One moment here. All of a sudden now, you have this male who still has his genitalia his privates still intact in a, in a locker room full of females, like dancing and parading around like as if it's nothing. Like if I, as a man, right, went into a, a washroom and did that, I would get in trouble. But all of a sudden, because this person says I'm a female, it's normal. It's okay. It's acceptable. This is, this is the awkwardness. This is the hypocrisy of the society that we live in. The old side, like I said, we want to, we want to, we want to make everyone happy with feelings. Everyone's feelings matters, but everyone's feelings is causing problems for others. Like 
I would, you have to understand, people have mothers, people have, you know, wives, people have sisters, people have grandmothers. If you had to think to yourself and say, would, would I want any of my family members to be in this position in a locker room with a male, six foot four, whatever it is, tall male, exposing himself? The answer is simply no. I mean, some some basic common sense, you would say no. But this was allowed by the NCAA. And honestly, I don't want to watch more of this video because it's just it's making me upset that how degrading we have become in our society to allow foolish, foolishness like this to occur. And, we, and we're saying we're so progressive of women's rights. But here, it's a clear example that women's rights are not being accepted at all. And yet, all that's happening is that women's rights are being degraded. Clear. We were not forewarned. We were not asked for our consent, and we did not give our consent. If nothing else, I hope you can truly see how this is a violation of our privacy and how some of us have felt uncomfortable, awkward, um, embarrassed, and even traumatized by this experience. The transgender athlete that's being discussed is actually Leah Thomas. And you can see from the pictures how she looks like now and how she looked like before when she was a man. And in Islam, people that pretty much imitate the opposite gender, in Islam, it's, it's noted that in a hadith by Rasulullah that these people are cursed. This curse can happen in a form in this life where you know, you're know sh you shamed or you know, you're ridiculed. But it also is a curse that will occur on the Day of Judgment. And so it's something that, you, as Muslims, we have to be kind of cognizant of this fact. And understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually going to, you know, deal judgment with you in this life or in the hereafter. And lastly, we have the video of Canadian politicians wearing red high heels in support against violence against women. Now, don't get me wrong, this is an issue in society and needs to be addressed. But we also fail to look at other issues such as violence against men. We build women's shelters around here and there, but why not build shelters for men as well? And the fact that these people are just walking around, they didn't really do anything. They say, oh, hey, well, we support it, let's stop it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's useless. Because at the end of the day, nothing really occurred from this. Nothing actually, no concrete solution was done from this. And one other thing was that one of our Muslim brothers was actually involved in walking around in the high heels. May Allah Father forgive him for what he did. And may Allah Father guide this brother and may he make the right decisions in the future. If you like the content, if you like what I said, support this channel, like and share and subscribe. Until then, assalamu alaikum and God bless.